And I walked up and I put my arm around him. I said, you okay? And he said, I wasn't expecting that. That was my father. My father came into my mind at that moment. And it just wrecked me. Oh. And he turned to me and he said, you still need the line. Jeff, congratulations on The Hill, man. It is an amazing film. I know you've been searching for a film like this for a long time, but it's more than just a sports movie. It's really about the resilience of the human spirit and this boy who is following his faith to reconnect with his father as an adult. Um, what made The Hill so special to you? And what was it about Ricky's journey that resonated with you? Well, when I read the script the first time, um, it was a really weird thing. My brother met Ricky in a lobby of a hotel uh, without knowing him. He was just there to meet someone else. And Ricky was sitting next to him talking on the phone about how frustrated he was trying to get his movie made and looking for a director that he felt was right. And my brother called me and said, look, I just convinced this guy to call you. He doesn't he didn't want to call you. He's, he's like frustrated with Hollywood. You just got to get on the phone and meet this guy. His story is amazing. And I was like, my brother never called me like that before. So I had a feeling this might be something special. So I met Ricky on the phone. Immediately, we had a connection. He sent me the script that night. I read it and it just just taught just ripped my heart out. I just was um I was just glued to it from the moment I read the script. It was I was I was obsessed with telling the story. And that's how it happened. Um, you know, to to find a little boy who wore leg braces like Forrest Gump who was crippled and went through an unbelievable, excruciatingly painful childhood, uh, and the fact that he was so poor that he, you know, didn't have shoes for months. Right. And um he was so poor bored that he would go out on a railroad track with his brother and his brother would pitch rocks to him, those little gray rocks on railroad tracks. And he would hit him with a stick. He did that every day, all day. And he got addicted to it, just like people get addicted to video games. And he got so good at it, he could aim the rock. So that impressed me. Um, and then, of course, transitioning into baseball was a natural thing for him. But it was really the underdog thing that I love about, about characters in movies like this. Um, he, he, to me, was the ultimate underdog, like Rocky. You right. know, everything in the world was against him. And he just didn't, he didn't take no for an answer. And I, I did the same, like when I was an actor, I would go up for movies and um, I'd meet a director in a room and I would be down to the second choice or third choice, or sometimes the sixth choice. And I would go home and they would call me and say, you were second choice. That's really hard to take. Right. Or, or you were sixth choice. And then I'm like, okay, but I never got depressed. I always use those as the next step to the next level, because I said to myself, those directors I'm meeting in these rooms don't know me at all. They've never met me before. So every director I walk in a room and meet, it's the first time they've ever seen me. And I always have a chance because of that. And that's what I felt with this, with being a filmmaker too. Um, this story to me was my way to show really the world or, or even myself that I was capable of making a movie like this um, because of the script was so strong and Ricky's story was so compelling. Yeah, so you did a phenomenal job. Oh, thanks, man. I, I put my heart and soul in it. It was, uh, if if I could tell you some of the unbelievable things I went through, you wouldn't believe it. It's too long to go into, but it was a long road. You know, it's kind of it's kind of crazy because uh, your chance meeting or your brother's chance meeting with Ricky almost kind of feels like when he's a kid and he hits that baseball right into the guy's windshield. And it kind of feels like that same kind of trajectory and journey that Ricky's always kind of been on. Yeah, we are totally on a parallel, Ricky and I. We're exactly alike in that way. Um, That's incredible. Look, I, I wake up every day, and I've done this my whole life. Do I have bad days? Do I have days where I'm down? Very seldom, but I do. I've, I've been I've been humbled in my life. Um, I had a part of my life where I had no money. My family was all passed away. I had asked all my friends for money. And after you ask your friends for money when you have nothing left, and they all say, Jeff, it's been a couple of years now or a year and we we've given you everything we can give you. We don't have anything for you anymore. You don't have anyone to turn to and no way out. Then you learn really about yourself. Right. And so when I used to teach acting to kids and they'd play these characters that had no food or money or poor, they didn't understand that. I said, you know, do you know what it's like not to have anybody to turn to? Like no one, like you start looking at people eating out of the trash cans on the street, homeless people, and you think, man, that could be me in a few months. Right. Gary, I'm not making this up. I mean, this really happened to me 
So all, the only reason I bring that up is what it did. It humbled me and made me a better person inside where I had a lot of heart, heart and love for people that go through it. Absolutely. And so that's what I wanted to translate into this movie is that when you go to a movie theater and sit there for two hours and you walk out, you want to be moved and, and feel something elated. And I love movies that I think about for weeks later or, or months later. You know, one guy came up to me at a screening and he said, Jeff, there's three kinds of movies. There's the one I just saw, which to me is one that'll last the test of time. I'll see it over and over. This movie, he said, is going to be around for a long time and it's going to be a classic. Oh, yeah. And it's the movies that you forget that you never want to see again. And then there's movies you never hear about. And he goes, yours is the kind of movie that this world needs today in the world that we're in. It's a really messed up world. It's upside down. And this kind of brings people together. I can tell you, I felt so uplifted after watching this movie and, and Ricky Hill's journey. Uh, look, I got to talk about Jesse Berry because he's tremendous in this film. And they never they say never work with animals or kids. And Jesse knocks it out of the park. What did he bring to the screen that wasn't on the page? I like your pun intended. I like that. Knock it out of the park. <laughs> right. We searched the whole world for that kid. My casting director put out a world search. We got actors from Australia, England, doing American accents. Some of them were great. Uh, a kid from Australia almost got the job, but I went with Jesse because Jesse had a quality uh, on camera. He had never acted before. He did a little audition and he swung the stick and he was just, he just was endearing, man. There was something about him. He had that little movie star quality inside of him and he was so innocent. He didn't know anything. He'd never been on a set. So everybody said, there's no way you can hire this kid. He's never worked. He's going to work with Dennis Quaid. Are you crazy? And I called his father and his father turns out he's a director. He directs Chicago Fire and other TV shows. And he had done a feature. And Michael Berry, his father, I said, Michael, if you if you direct this kid and you get him in shape, will he be able to handle this movie? And he said, absolutely. And I said, wait a minute. He's carrying 50 pages of my movie, 50 minutes. And the audience has to fall in love with him and believe him that he's real. And if he fa falters in any way, the movie's dead. And he said, don't worry, Jeff, he'll be ready. And I just felt like in my heart, this guy's being honest with me. Right. So Jesse showed up and he brought that innocence, that naivety that no other kid had. They all were Hollywood actors. They had been on movies. They had a little bit of something about them that wasn't true. It was like acted. And Dennis, the, the the telltale sign was when Dennis came in the room to audition him. I asked Dennis to come help me with the kids and also with Colin. I had three actors for each role, the young Ricky and the older Ricky. And Dennis came in and he read with little Ricky and he looked at me and he said, this kid's unbelievable. Yeah, he's great. He is so innocent. And another kid read that I really love and he grabbed that kid by the shoulders, Dennis, and he said, why are you acting? And the kids, and I didn't think the kid was acting that much. I mean, he was really putting, he was, he was emotional. Right. Come on. And he shook him. And then the kid started crying. He said, there's the real kid in there. But Jesse didn't have that. Jesse brought it. Like he just came in with it. So everything Dennis said to him was like the first time he ever heard it. It was amazing. Uh, that's incredible. Speaking of Dennis, I think he he disappears in this role. He has that great like Texas twang to his uh, accent. What was it like collaborating with Dennis Quaid and and Colin Ford on this film? I didn't have to say much of Dennis. He under, you know his he came from Texas. As a matter of fact, his family's from the same town that Ricky grew up in. Oh wow, what a coincidence! Yeah, it was weird. And he understood. He said to me, "I understand this character." It was a tough role for him in this in the beginning not tough meaning hard it was just he said it was a challenging role for him because he thought that um james hill was very complex and what he goes through with his son sure he had a lot of different colors and things to go through um now to talk about collaborating with him we had a moment on set where he was uh, the scene where he's going to punish his his son oh i love that scene that scene almost that scene had me welling up man well, let me tell you, I worked tirelessly to find a line that he had to say at the very end before he's supposed to hit his son. I have him say this. I worked forever trying to figure this line out and I came up with it. And the line was, go back inside. The punishments already happened. Right. It was a nice little line. Dennis turned to me right before we shot the scene. He said, hey, Jeff, this line at the end, do I have to say this? And I said, why? And he said, sometimes. 
you don't have to say everything. And I said, no, it's not. I don't, I don't, I believe in that too. I, I want it edited. I want it. I want, I'd rather have you feel it than say it. But in this moment, I worked so hard on this line. I don't know if I'll use it, but just say it, Dennis. And he said, I don't want to say it. I said, you have to say it. I ha you have to. And he looked at me and he went, okay. And he did it. He did the scene. And then right as he's about to punish his kid, he just breaks down and starts crying way deeper than what you saw, because I left it in there, the truth of it. But afterward, he really broke down. Right. And I walked up and I put my arm around him. I said, you OK? And he said, I wasn't expecting that. That was my father. My father came into my mind at that moment. And it just wrecked me. Oh. And he turned to me and he said, you still need the line. <laughs> That's and great. I said, no, I don't. I could never ask for anything better than what you just did. Jeff, the movie The Hill is tremendous. Thank you so much for, for taking your time to talk with me today. I love this film. I can't wait for people to see it. Like you said, I think this is a movie that people need to see right now. Um, thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Joseph. Really, thank you for, for supporting us. Of course, of course. Thank you.